Welcome, welcome back to our appendix number two on fusion inside of the Vinci Resolve. This is the final appendix, and this is the final lesson or exercise of this series. Okay, so um, we are back into our, if you, if you go back to the, uh, the series, to our tutorial number 11, lesson 11, which is with um, the particle system, right? How we work with particles. Now, so what we did, just to reiterate and go back to what we were doing back then was that when we worked on this, right? If you go back here on the fusion tab, you can see that we used a this media one, right? Node here at, that was um, the noise EXR, right? As our texture, right? Which we used as a, if you go back to the, the emitter node here and you go on the style, we used as a bitmap, right? We used it as a bitmap image to project into our emitter, um, to project into uh, our tree node here. But now if we go back to our media pool, right? That was the noise that we imported. This is exactly the same one. This media one is the noise. So it's this, um, basically this texture, right? And then we used as a bitmap once again to um, then attach to our particles and created the smoke. Now, in this tutorial, I'm actually going to show you how you create this physical smoke, okay? How we did that. And uh, so yes, this is the final appendix, as I said, and let's get started and create it from scratch inside of Fusion. All right, so let's go back to the edit tab here. And this is our finished comp, right? If you remember from last time. And what we're gonna do now is to uh, uh, go here on the effects tab, right? We can close the media pool and we can add a fusion composition here, okay? So uh, don't worry about the length right now. You can always change that if you wanted to by right clicking. And then uh, you can say, uh, you can basically like change the duration. You can change the, um, you know, a shortcut is uh, command D, uh, et cetera, right? If you want it longer or shorter. So in this case, I'm just gonna keep the, the standard default uh, uh, options here. Okay, so once again, we work with fusion compositions before. Basically, all we need to do is click on our um, fusion tab here, and then we can see that nothing is really happening. And that's because uh, we need to uh, create it, right? Okay, so let's get started. Now, one thing that it's very important about this tutorial is that I am going to introduce the saver node, what saver node does and how that's used. And then uh, the, uh, okay, so instead of the media out, I'm going to show you what a saver node is and then how you use the fusion um, uh, option here to actually uh, export or find a location where to export your EXR file. Okay, I know this doesn't make sense right now, but as we go through, everything will make sense in just a few minutes. Okay, all right, so let's get Started. So first thing I'm going to do is to get a fast noise. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's this one. This is a background. Um, fast noise. Just bring it in. And uh, we've never used this before. We actually did. I'm sorry. On we did, right? No, we have not. Yes, we did. We used that on lesson <laughs> lesson twelve. Um, Sorry, because sometimes I've recorded this in different times, so I don't remember which one was which. But yes, yeah, we did use it. Okay, so uh, let's load this into the viewer. And all we see is this. So let's play the clip. Nothing is happening. You can see that? This is just a regular fast noise with an alpha channel in it, because we can see that by the checkbox uh, in the background. Okay, so let's uh, let's do something to it. Okay, so let's click on it. And first thing I'm going to do here on the noise tab, um, actually, before I do anything, let's go inside here with image size. Now, this is the thing. If you want to have something small, okay, uh, smaller resolution and to attach as a bitmap to specific uh, compositions, it's better to have a uh, smaller resolution and um, because that way it's not an overload over your system rather than having like such high resolution on, on moving images, etc. because that takes a, a toll on your, on your system. So what I would suggest is to do smaller resolutions and attach them just the way we did to our particles and then create animations with that. Um, that is the best way. So let's uncheck this uh, auto resolution here and I'm gonna really go for small numbers. So in this case, uh, 200 by 200, okay? So something like that, so pretty small. So. Uh, that was on the image, right? Now let's go back to noise. First thing we want to do here, it's to uh, increase our detail, right? So right now it's at five, let's take it to about, as at two, let's take it to about five, okay? And you can see we already have a change here. Let's play the clip, nothing is happening once again. That's because we are going to change the, this uh, rate here, which is the seeth rate here. And we can change it to whichever number we want. Uh, in this case, I can do um, probably like 0.1, 
Okay, that's a little too much. So let's do 0 0.01. Okay, so let's see what happens. It's a little bit too 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 little. So we can do maybe a point. Let's do 0.5. Okay, so to about half. Okay, and once we play that, we can see what's happening here. So let's take even a little bit less. So point two, something like that. Something that would be nice. Okay, point two is the right amount for us. Okay, and um, let's uh, get going. Okay, so now we can see that it's it's a little bit makes much more sense. It's the the movement, right? It's uh it. it kind of resembles the movement of smoke as well, right? So, uh, and this is, the seat rate is basically like changing uh, our uh, animation inside our fast noise. Okay, so now that we did that, uh, we can play around with a little bit of contrast and brightness if we wanted to, but in this case, I'm happy with what I have here. So I'm gonna go back on the, I'm gonna go now on the color tab, and this is where we really starting to, um, uh, create the the image and like the look of our smoke. So uh, let's change the um, type from two color to gradient. Okay, and now you can see that it's looking much more like uh, smoke now. Okay, and then I'm going to change the gradient type from uni here to uh, radial. Okay, so by changing it to radial, now we have something like that. Okay. And we're looking much, much better. A um, few other things that I want to change now is if I click on the fast noise, uh, I am going to uh, click this green tab here and bring it towards the middle, right around there. And I'm going to take the second one as well and take it to about, to about here. So something like that, okay? So we can center a little bit our, our smoke in here, okay? And, uh, okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do now is to, um, to play a little bit with the colors here. So with my green in here, I'm gonna click on it and then let's uh, make it about this kind of gray, something around there. And then here, I'm gonna change it to black completely black and then the alpha I'm gonna take it all the way to zero okay so by so let me play before I take that to zero check out what's happening so now we have our smoke as you can see here okay and then by taking the transparency to zero now on the alpha here to uh, our black color it's perfect when we use it as a texture then for our composition just the way you um, we did on lesson 11 so once again watch lesson 11 to to see how we use the texture to actually uh um in in our composition okay then and, and this would make much more sense okay so this is our smoke once again let's take the transparency to zero so we can use it as a texture in our composition later on. Okay, so now that we change these parameters, we have something that looks much more like smoke. And basically, our animation, it's completed. We have our smoke. Once again, if you want to see it better, I'm taking the alpha to about here. Uh, once again, uh, just to show you something real quick, if you go back here to noise, we can play with these parameters as well. If you want it like uh, something like 0.3, let's say, you can you can go for it, right? And then have, uh, it keeps going up there, uh, something more like that. You know, it's really your decision how much you want to change the C3 to. Uh, in this case, I'm just keep it 0.2 because for me, uh, this works. Once again, go back on the color tab and make sure to change the alpha here on the black color here, not on the gray. The gray gradient stays at one, the black here, okay? See, those are the two points. Uh, take it all the way down, okay? So now we do have, the animation is completed, as I said. Um, next thing you want to do is add what's called a saver node. So. Let me explain this very well so you can understand what's happening. Now, if I attach the output of my fast noise to my media out, okay? Now that here renders inside of our um, DaVinci Resolve on the edit page, because once again, what does the media out do, right? This is the last node where you are actually now projecting back, not projecting, but this is the basically goes back within DaVinci Resolve into our edit page, the, the finished product of, okay? But now, let's say you created this texture, right? And what you did with the texture was that, um, let's say you did an on Fusion Studio, okay? Instead of uh, DaVinci Resolve or something like that, or you maybe wanna use it for a different project that is not there. 
whatever the case might be. If you attach it here, it's going to work for your edit page, like inside of uh, DaVinci Resolve. But, oh, I opened the wrong, <laughs> I just opened Blender by accident. Um, but so, but sorry about that. Um, but this is because this is if you wanted to use it here but let's say you want to just bring it somewhere else so what do you do in that case you use what's called a saver node if you want to go from software to software just a, a quick example so let's say i want i'm working on davinci resolve studio okay not this one uh the davinci sorry not davinci resolve a fusion studio and uh i want to bring into here you use what's called a saver node okay and let me explain what that is a saver node is basically a node that allows you to save that specific specific element, texture, or whatever you use, effect, or or whichever composition that you've been working on as a saver node. Now, you have a saver node that you can export and save it into a location, like a desktop, like an external drive, or anything that you want to save it to, to then re-import on a different project or, or, or some other project, which is actually very, very important, because if you're working on big projects where you're working with uh, multiple editors, compositors, VFX artists, etc. This is a pretty, pretty common task where you're work working between workstations and different computer systems and machines, etc. Right. So the saver node then becomes uh, a, an essential tool in that case. So let me show you how you do that. You just basically click here on the fast noise, um, uh, then shift spacebar, and then you click here saver. Okay. So that's the your saver node. Now that's going to save in our saver node that we can. Um, export it uh, into a take it to a different location to a location that we choose to take it and then we can uh we have it stored safely in that uh that specific location then we can import it back to our specific project on on a different project or uh, something else that you're working on um okay as a saver node okay so to do that now uh once again we're not touching the me out because we don't want to render it into inside of uh, the edit page here so we leave that aside we don't care about this okay so um uh, now that we have our saver node we click on it and then you're going to see a few things here file name and uh frame offset and stuff like that so now i don't want to offset the uh the saver i don't want to touch that all, all i want to do is like get, uh, have the file name and find the location here so the file name is basically dependent on by clicking here on browse you can find your own location so if i click here on browse right and then i'll bring it so for me i'm going to bring it here to my desktop uh let me bring up a um specific uh, uh folder here that i can create so this is some of my uh projects here but i can create a new folder and i can call this uh smoke okay i'm gonna call this folder smoke okay i created this folder and then the effect i'm gonna call it smoke effects it's perfect this title right here and then this is what you want to save it as i'm going to keep it at open at exr file okay and then click save now when you do that it automatically takes that uh, file name and brings it in, uh, into that specific uh location that you chose to um take your um file to then you have other tabs uh, such as export format setting which for now we are not going to touch you also have the zip here if you want it uh specific like um uh, different compression types etc i'm going to keep it to zip 16 lines for now and the depth keep it to auto and now that we we've done that um what i want to do is go on the fusion here and then you're going to click here on render all savers okay so once you click that uh, Fusion does its thing, then uh, it completed it. It's pretty fast because in this case, as I said, I used a 200 by 200 uh, resolution for our uh, composition here, which is very small. And that's why it did it so fast. And then you click OK. And now it, the, the file itself is saved on that specific location that you had um, that you saved it on. So now let's say I want to see where this file is. OK, so what I can do now is I can go back on my edit here and um, let's pretend that um, I want to go back to our the same basically project that we worked on. But before we do that, I'm going to go here on media, right, where we have only these three things. And now I can start bringing media in. So what I can do now, it's I can go to my folder here. I can go to and basically like find where uh, these things are. So I can go back on users. I can go back to my own thing, then my desktop. And I save that specific smoke folder, if you remember here. And this is the smoke effects I created. So I can bring it out 
here, right? This is the smoke, right? This is the one we used last time, the noise. This is the one we created. So they're basically, look at this. They're basically identical, okay? And uh, of course, then um, you, you can always do your own type and specific. But so th this is our smoke now. We have it here. So we could, if we go back on our fusion here, remember this is the media one with the noise I used. Now, what if I want to bring my file instead? So I can do that by just basically, let's say I delete that media one that I used as a bitmap last time. Okay. And then I go back on my media pool here and I bring my smoke effects, not the noise that we had. So smoke effects, I'll bring it up here. Okay. And then close the media pool, then just connect the output to the emitter and look what happens. You added your own uh, fast noise that you created inside your composition. Okay. And that's it. That's basically all you have to do. So I hope this tutorial helped. Uh, I hope you got some value and some knowledge out of this um, because this explains, this is basically how we do a lot of things with compositing, especially where we, because it's, you know, other than DaVinci Resolve, oftentimes you have people working with different softwares and, and different um, uh, pipelines, etc. So uh, the Safer Node is one of those essential tools that you need to understand and uh, know inside of uh, Fusion. Okay, I hope this helped and uh, thank you for watching our my appendix number two. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them down the comment section and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Uh, thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this series and um, thank you again and have a good one.